Hi, and in today's Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you a simple way to create a perfect collage for all your images, a template that you can then save and use over and over again for future projects. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is to create our new document. So I've just loaded up Photoshop and I'm going to go down to the Create New tab here. And within this section, you're given lots of different options. But if you go along to the Print section here, you're given a number of standardized paper. So I'm just going to go for A4 and that's the because of simplicity of printing. So I'm just going to click on A4. Okay, so now my document's been created, I want to insert our guidelines. So I'm going to go up to View and then go down to New Guide Layout. By default, generally you're given two columns and two rows. But for this particular project, I want to have three columns and five rows. Now, this will take a little bit of playing around with depending on what images you want to insert and which orientation they are. So it might be that you want them in portrait or landscape. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to create some white outlines around each image. So in order to do that, I'm going to firstly create a margin and that comes up as default as 20 pixels all the way around your page. And then I'm going to create some additional spaces around these squares. So I'm going to insert my cursor into the gutter of the columns and insert 20 pixels. Do the same with the rows, 20 pixels. And as you can see, I've now got a white line or what will end up being a white line around each of my images. And then I simply go up and click OK. Now the reason we do these guidelines is because then when we click and drag our selection, it will click into these lines. So in order to make sure it does that, if you go to the View tab and you ensure that this snap element here is checked, it will mean that when we now go to our square icon here, or our selection icon, when we move over and click and drag, it just clicks into that red line. And we don't have to keep moving it around or adjusting it to make sure that it's exactly in the correct position, it's all lined up correctly and all the photographs are aligned vertically and horizontally. It makes the process so much easier. So the next thing I'm going to do is going to create a new layer. And then I'm going to fill this box here with a colour. The reason I'm going to do that is because when you've got so many images on your page and you look along here to find the different box, it's really difficult if they're just all black and white. So I'm going to go up to Edit, Fill, then if you just simply click on Colour, click on it again, then you'll get the full spectrum of colours. You just simply move the arrow up and down. And again, it doesn't matter which colours you select, just make sure they are different so that you can then identify them in the right-hand column here. So I'm just going to go up and I'm going to put my cursor in this top right corner here, select the red and click OK. Click OK again and as you can see that square has turned red. Now if you don't understand why I'm doing this it will all become very clear when I put the photos in at the end. So the next thing to do is to just then select another layer by just choosing this add icon at the bottom right corner here and then again just simply click and drag to highlight your next square. Now I use the shortcut which is shift F5 to bring up the fill icon. Then I just select the colour again and instead of moving this cursor here because I want a different colour altogether I'm just going to move these arrows up to orange. Click OK, click OK and then my square turns orange. So I'm just going to continue doing that. I'm going to do this one more time before I speed the video up. Click and drag Shift F5, colour, click on it twice, move the arrow up and click OK. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all the rest of the squares. So now I'm going to go ahead and insert my images. Now I've generally found the easiest way to do this is to drag and drop. So all of these images here I'm just going to use repetitively. So I'm just going to grab this image here. I'm just going to pull it into my document. 
and then it automatically comes in as a smart object. So just click the check arrow up here and this will automatically be inserted as a smart object which means if you make it bigger or smaller it won't change the quality of the image. So let's say for example I want to put this particular image in this lower left corner here. Well I know it's pink and it's going to be this one here and as you can see this is where the colours really help. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this layer on top of that pink box. So all we're going to do is we're going to use the move tool which is this icon here or click V on your keyboard I'm just going to move this image down to this lower left corner. Then all we're going to do is we're going to press the Alt key and as you can see this little arrow and box appears and then we're just going to click between those two layers. Alternatively you can right click and go down to create clipping mask and it will do exactly the same thing. As you can see there's this little arrow here pointing down to this square here which means that this image can only be viewed if it's over this square here. And if we go back to our move tool, which you should still have here, you can then move that image around within that box. If I want to change the size of this image, I can either go to edit and go down to transform and then just click scale or I can hit command or control T on my keyboard which is much quicker. Then I'm just going to reduce the size of it and then just pop it into that square or rectangle. I keep calling them squares, I know they're rectangles. And then if we want to insert the next image here we go back up to our images, click on the image we want and then just drag it into the document. And again if I want to put it here on this pink one you can see that the pink square is here. I'm just going to click OK because the image has been imported. And then before you create the clipping mask again, it's always a good idea to just move the image to the square you want. So we've got our move tool selected. I'm just going to move that down. And then we're going to just move that image above the pink square. Make sure your image is actually above the rectangle where you want it to be inserted. And again, to create that clipping mask, you need to hover between these two layers hold the ALT key down and click. Again with your move tool you can move this image around or we can transform it can command or control T and just once again move the image around. Okay so I'll do this one more time and then I'll go ahead and speed up the video to fill in all the other rectangles and then show you the final collage. So once again, grab your image, click and drag it across, oh. click and drag it across, go up to the checkbox, use your move tool again to go to the lower right corner because that's where I want my image in here. Then move the layer above the rectangle where you want it, hit the Alt key between the layers and click, Command or Control T, resize, and move and then press the checkbox at the top. So go ahead and do that for all the different rectangles and then I'll come back at the end to show you the final image. Okay, now we're finished. You can see that occasionally I've added a few extra uh, guidelines. Don't worry about this too much. Sometimes that happens. It won't affect the final outcome of your image. So now what we need to do is to get rid of those guidelines just so that we can have a look to see what our final image looks like. So if we go to view and then we go down to clear guides. 
So now you have your completed image. You can either frame it or you can cut out all of these individual images for a collage or a scrapbook or just to distribute between friends and family, completely up to you. But it's a great way and it's super simple. It can be a little bit long-winded, but what's great about it is once you set up the template, you can actually save it. And all you have to do then is just change the photographs. Just literally drag and drop them in again and they will be suitable for uh, the next time you want to create a collage. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.